Good evening, Mission Control. Well, tonight I want to talk to you about our grow trays that we have in here. Uh, we spoke about these before in a previous episode, but these are going to be our flood and drain trays for microgreen growth. And I think we could probably also use them for some aquaponic growth as well, but we'll do some experiments there. We do like to experiment. Um, one of the things that Mrs. Martian wanted me to do was, well, we really want to buy a germination chamber, but they're fairly expensive, quite a few uh, $1,000 uh, for a, a, a chamber. So uh, we just don't, we, we have to prioritize how we spend our money right now. So what we're thinking is we'll take a piece of plastic, like what we've done here, a black piece, piece of plastic instead of clear, but I had clear over the weekend to do this test, and we'll put it over the top of the bed, like what we did here, and we'll pull it tight at the end, and then we'll put the trays in uh, for germination. We'll put those in, and then we'll put a little bit of water down at the bottom of this. And these cords coming out, you can see they're all a mess right now. This isn't the be all end all. This is just, just to kind of get this thing going. Uh, go to heaters, three heaters underneath of this to try to keep this water up at the uh, 70, close to 70 degree temperature range. So let's see where we're at right now. Looks like about 64. Yeah, 64. So the water coming in from the aquaponic system is warmer than well water. Well water sits at about 45 degrees Fahrenheit and the water from aquaponics is currently right about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So we do have a little bit of warmth. Uh, these mats are the mats we're using for uh, the seed starts that we have. They're just little, you know, the seed start mats. I think that in this test, I, I think they're just not going to be warm enough uh, to do the job. Uh, honestly, I, I, I just kind of thought that they would be uh, warm enough and I didn't do any calculations and that's shame on me. Should have done that. Uh, we needed to buy these mats anyway for the germination chambers for the actual aquaponics seeds. So we just bought three more to, to play with. They're pretty inexpensive off of Amazon. I think like eight bucks a piece or something and put them underneath of here. And we are getting some results. We Like over here, um, we are getting some condensation that's building up, which means the objective of this thing is, is being accomplished. We're trapping uh, the evaporated water, it's condensing and it's dripping back down, creating a, a nice humid environment for the plants uh, to germinate in. The the challenges though with this, though, well, there's a few challenges, so let's talk about those. Oh, well, one of the first challenges that we have is just creating a, a nice seal around the outside of this thing. So I think if I just bring the plastic over a little bit over the edge, go with black plastic instead of clear, and then maybe even get some magnets and glue some magnets on the inside and then um, kind of glue them to the outside of the plastic so that it pulls over and secures the lid nice and tight over the top. I think that'll really help retain heat better as well as the uh, humidity. Um, right now we have to have the tray tops on here. We don't really like that idea because that's just more to clean. That takes more time. So I'd really prefer to, to keep this thing nice and tight across the top so that it doesn't droop down into the seeds. If it droops down in the seeds, then you need to clean the fabric as well. Um, so that's, that's a challenge there. Uh, drainage is another one with these. Um, so the normal ebb and flow table, I'll show you this here. This is the made, purposely made drain for this table. So you got a little rubber gasket and the lip here. So there you go. Now the challenge is this lip. This lip, if you mount it the way it's supposed to go, so you drill yourself your one inch hole and then you plop that down through with your gasket and you bring up your screw here or your nut excuse me and you put your nut back on and you tighten that down real tight like it all seals up beautifully life is great but it leaves I think this is that's like an eighth of an inch uh, what close to a millimeter there uh, of height that will allow that much water to stay in the bed now in our system, we don't really like to have a lot of extra water unless you're germinating, then a little bit of water is okay, like an eighth of an inch would be fine. 
But when we want to do flood and drain, especially when it's bright in here and you have a lot of light coming in, where there's a lot of nutrients in that water, you get an algae bloom if you leave standing water. So I don't really like this idea. So what I'm thinking is we won't use the nut. We're not gonna use the nut at all and we won't use the uh, gasket at all. And what we'll do is we'll get ourselves some construction adhesive, put it around the bottom of this and stick it right up on the bottom of the uh, tray. It's permanent, the trays aren't gonna be moving very often so there's no need to make it um, removable. Uh, and it's not that big a deal anyway. If you did need to move it, you could still move your tray and life would be fine. So I think that's what I want to do. So probably rough that up a little bit, drill the hole through the, uh, the bed, and then uh, adhere this up to the top. Life is good. And then we can take ourselves a little bit of that black um, tubing that they have there. Uh, whoa, I think it's PVC tubing. It's a flexible tubing. Uh, and just run that right down into the grow bed below it for drainage. And uh, that's the game plan there. So plumbing on this thing is important. Uh, now, when we go to germination, we're gonna need to plug this hole. Uh, so I just got a rubber plug coming. Now the logic there is I didn't, I could have used an electronic valve, added complexity. Um, and I wasn't all that excited about more complexity. Um, but we're going to be here because we're going to have planted it. So you can't not plant microgreens. Well, I guess if you created like a robot, you could plant microgreens from afar. But uh, in the meantime, we're going to be here, which means we can put the plug in and remove the plug for germination. So the idea is you, you put a little bit of water in it, uh, plug it, and then uh, pull the top over the top of it, let it do its heating thing. Again, I think I need some better heating pads and then a better cover and we'd be doing pretty good. So now the next challenge is the pump. The pump system on this, uh, we've been testing with these. Uh, well, let me go show you what we have over there. Okay, so now I'm just on the other side of the bed here from where we were at. And this is kind of the manifold that we have. A T coming off of the main supply line from the aquaponics water, uh, a service valve so I can turn this off and then uh, two control valves here and here. Uh, another valve down below, I can turn off the entire unit. And I will more than likely automate these units, uh, which will be used to actually water, uh, support the flood and drain of the table. So I'll probably uh, use one of the smaller uh, valves that I have left over uh, as just testing. We'll put those on here and let them go through their cycles and see how well they work. Um, hopefully I don't have to get the super industrial strength ones, but we'll see. I have the ones, I might as well test it first before I invest more money on it. Um, but in doing this, uh, the, the head, the total rise here of this pump is gonna be up close to, what is that? Five, six, seven, about nine feet. Um, almost three meters that it, that it needs to go up. Uh, we have the pumps, I don't really feel like switching them out. And I was thinking about this today, I, I think it would probably be better to run a T in, well probably right here actually, put a, another T in and run a second pump in where I can turn this line off and run both of these from a supply line from uh, another pump, a, a pump just dedicated to the microgreens uh, or these flood and drain tables, the upper tables essentially. And I originally I was like, well, that's just another pump, which means you need to bring electricity over here. You need to have a controller for it, a relay for it. Do you really want to do that? I, I think I actually convinced myself to run another pump as compared to just putting valves on these, uh, like what we have here. And essentially, you know, this bed is one, two, three, four, five, five, or this lane is five beds long. I could have called it bed one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, so that everything cycles through and these fill in the cycle with the other beds. I could do that. Um, that would allow me to use a single pump that we currently have. Uh, I'd have to update the server code. Uh, but one of the challenges with that, or it's not a challenge actually, it's just 
if I put the T in here and run a second pump, if the primary pump fails, I could actually run the entire system off of the microgreen pump. So I'd, I'd have redundancy at that point. I could actually just open this valve up, make sure these are both closed, and now the water comes in and goes into the supply line here um, while I repair the other pump. And um, I don't know, I kind of like that idea. I kind of like the idea of having the redundant system here. So I'm gonna probably think about this one some more as well. Uh, tonight I'm gonna install the, um, the valve, or I'm sorry, the empty nozzle, <laughs> the drain, geez, where's my vocabulary? Uh, install the drain, let that harden overnight, see how well that performs. If it uh, does well, I expect it will. Um, I'll get the rest of them ordered and installed. Well, that was easy. I like that. Okay, here we go. Got our Loctite Premium Pro Line Construction Adhesive engineered specifically for tradesmen. Polyurethane formula, all weather and waterproof. Last one being important, though it's not going to be submerged in water. Just exposed to water. There we go. Like that goopy. Love the goopiness. Very important to be goopy. Okay. And under we go. Okay. How can I bend my body here? Contort myself for this job. Okay, a little twist there. Line it up. Okay, looking good. All right, whoa, blinding you, sorry about that. So there we go. Uh, we got the drain installed tonight. We'll let that harden up overnight. I'm gonna go get a clamp and clamp it actually as well, or some tape probably be good to just hold it in place there. And uh, we'll come back tomorrow, make sure it all is set in place real good, and uh, put the drainage pipe back on or on it. And uh, that's it. We should have a drain now. If that one works, I'll also put an overflow drain into this as well. Uh, so we'll check that all out and make sure it, it does do everything it's supposed to. So anyway, we got a lot to do tonight, my goodness. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, on, um, and on Patreon. Excuse me. Ugh, tired. Uh, in the meantime, this is The Real Martian. Out.